Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another fine day in southern Pennsylvania. It's a balmy 21 degrees but we're still going to work today. Today I'm going to install a 2 inch front 1 inch rear leveling kit from Ready Lift on my 2018 Nissan Titan. It's an SV so it's that mid-grade package. Um, not much else has been done to it, just some a couple cosmetic upgrades if you will. But uh, this is the first big thing where we're actually going to tear some stuff apart and see uh, I hope at least a relatively minor change uh, in the stance of the vehicle. Right now from the factory it's got kind of a lame rake if you will. Uh, it's not a Pro 4X so kind of hoping to get it somewhere in the area of that ride height. And then I got a whole bunch of other things planned for it as time goes. But guess what? Time is money. Got to get some money to put some stuff into this thing to do the projects that I want to do. So it's going to be a long term. We're going to call this Project Titan. I know, pretty original. Uh, but with that said, i got to figure out how to get this into the garage. And maybe get the garage door down so I don't freeze my butt off today. But if I can't, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be working with the garage door open and putting on a couple more layers. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll get ready. This is it. This is the Ready Lift 694204 leveling kit for the, I believe it's 2004 to 2020 actually. Not much changed between the first generation and second generation suspension wise. So uh, this will fit a wide variety of years of the Nissan Titan. But why did I choose this kit? Well, theoretically, if you believe what they tell you, you don't have any coil bucket contact and you don't need any upper control arms. I wasn't ready to dive into that at this point. So this comes with the cam bolts right here, which allow you to align the front suspension to factory specifications without the upper control arm change out. Uh, it comes with some drop brackets for the rear shocks, although from what I understand, you may or may not really need these based on the factory uh, suspension. But what's interesting about this kit is this piece right here. Now, yeah, it's a coil spring spacer, but this one actually replaces the top hat of the front strut assembly. And so the coil spring will actually sit on this surface here. And then the shaft of the front strut will actually go through. You reuse the factory bushing, and then this replaces the whole thing entirely, and then... You've got your uh, mounting studs that'll go uh, through the top of the strut mount. Uh, the rear is pretty simple. It's just some new U-bolts and some cast iron spacer blocks for the rear axle. Uh, pretty low key if you look at it. I don't even think it's quite an inch. That's about the lift you're going to get. And if you look at these spacers, they're obviously not two inches. But based on how everything gets put together, that's what you're supposed to end up with. So we'll see. Not sure how that's going to look. Um, I did not want to do a rough country lift. I've read some, uh, we'll call it bad things about that. And honestly, it, it's all beauties in the eye of the beholder. So if it works for you, great. But this was a little bit more uh, complete of a kit. And with that rear lift, from what I understand, if you, if you do a front leveling kit, which just usually involves the bolt-on spacers, you end up with a, a squat in the rear you know, half to one inch depending on what kit you're using. And so you kind of get a bulldog stance and that's definitely, I do not want that. So this came with the rear blocks. Now I got a heck of a deal on this thing. This thing retails for 360 bucks pretty much everywhere on the internet. I won't tell you how, I won't tell you where because I'm not sponsored by anyone, nor am I going to give anyone a plug. But I got this kit for $180 total. Brand new, 100% factory, 100% ready lift. So... We'll see if it's as good as they say it is. With that, let's get to moving out.
Like I said, I tried to get the truck in here, and guess what? It fits. First time I've had it in the garage fully. But if you look, it'll close. I just might have to walk through the truck to get from one side of the garage to the other. So that's going to make things interesting. But I think it's doable. So our first goal is to get this front end lifted. I'm going to start with the front first. Why? Uh, because it's the most complicated. The rear really shouldn't take that long. We'll have to flip the truck around. But get the front end lifted, and we will start with this side, see how it goes. Um, uh, keep in mind, if you're going to do this conversion with the ready lift, you need a spring compressor. So I got a manual spring compressor. It's pretty straightforward. I got plenty of shop air. Shouldn't be an issue if I can dig it out under, underneath my kids' bikes and everything. And uh, that should make things go a little bit quicker. But... Stay tuned. Let me get this thing up in the air. And again, let's see if we can actually close the garage door. If not, eh, you might see my breath through some of these shots. Well, as luck would have it, the truck fits. But, since I don't feel like walking through the truck to get to the other side of the garage, I'm going to leave the door open. It's not too bad. I'll tough it out. But let's talk a little bit about what we're going to have to do here uh, to start the installation of this kit. So I've got the vehicle supported on jack stands. Uh, just raise the whole front of the vehicle if you've got the capacity to do it. That way you can work between both sides. Uh, but we're going to tackle the passenger side first because it's honestly the closest spot to where I was starting. Uh, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove or at least take the bolt out of the bracket that holds the ABS sensor and the brake line to the uh, front knuckle. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and we will remove the front sway bar end links on both sides. That's going to allow this bar to drop down and break it free of the lower control arm. We'll take out the upper uh, bucket mounts for the uh, for the strut. There's three bolts up there and then we will disconnect the lower strut uh, bolt onto the lower control arm. And then the last thing we will do from there is disconnect the upper control arm from the steering knuckle. Uh, there's a cotter pin in that that does not come with the kit, so keep that in mind. You have to purchase a new one. I have a whole bin of them, so it's not that big of a deal. And that really should be it. We may have to take out this uh, tie rod from the uh, front steering knuckle, but theoretically this whole thing should just pitch down and we should be good to go. That'll get us enough to be able to get the coil out. And then in the back here, a little later, I'll show you where the new alignment cams for the lower control arms. We're going to replace both mounting bolts to the subframe with the uh, alignment cams for the that come with the kit. And again, that'll allow them to move the lower control arm in and out when we go to get that aligned. And then once we got all that done, I will show you what you need to do to blow apart these coil springs on the struts and get the new spacers mounted. But again, this is a cart before the horse type thing, so we actually got to do some work before we get to that point.
Oh, so here's what I figured out. The directions don't actually tell you this, but when you're removing this lower control arm bolt, guess what? It's really, really long. Like, really, really long. So, the problem with that is, sway bar's in the way. So you have to pop a couple bolts out there, 17 millimeter, and just drop that sway bar down some so you can actually slide the bolt all the way out of the lower control arm mount. Now I'm working on the front one, the rear one, should be a lot easier because there's no obstructions. But we adapt and we overcome. So much for easier. <sighs> Incidentally, if you don't know what a cam bolt is, see how it has the flat side on it? And these washers have a flat hole, uh, flat side on the hole, I should say, and that allows that uh, bolt to pivot off axis so that we can move those uh, lower control arms in and out. By we, I mean the alignment shop because that's who's going to have to do it. Remember to use anti C's. This is one of those things that gets taken apart pretty frequently over the life of the truck. Uh, put some anti-seize on there so when they go to take those bolts out or loosen them up, they're not going to be seized. Back to work. Okay, ladies and gents, our coil spring compressors. The idea is we're going to compress this coil spring. I'm just going to use my impact enough to get the bonnet or the top cap off of the springs uh, and then remove the nut that holds the shaft of the top of the strut to the top of the, uh, of the bonnet here. And then we're going to take this uh, bushing out, we're going to put it into our new top cap and reassemble everything. Everything else stays the same. So theoretically, it shouldn't really take us that long. I'm going to do this. You can set these up either way, and I'm going to set these up so that I have to drive them from the bottom. And I'm just going to rotate back and forth between the two. According to plan. So my old strut spring compressor just didn't want to work. I had to run out to the wonderful Harbor Freight and buy a new one which allowed me to basically compress these. Uh, I had about a quarter inch of space to work with. These springs are pretty tight and they're not very big. So I had to be very careful about the positioning and then working the spring down. Once I did that I removed the top nut which is a 17 millimeter I used an 8 millimeter wrench to just hold the uh, center shaft in place while I loosened it. Removed the top hat, took the isolator bushings, which you can't see now because they're now inside, 
and that whole unit replaces the top part of the strut assembly. Um, realistically, it really wasn't that hard. So everything's back together now, and it's ready to go back on the vehicle. Now we can start putting some stuff back together. Uh, we'll talk about some torque specifications here in a second. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get everything loosely mocked up, and we'll work on tightening things down as we go. So here's the question. Am I done the front? And the answer is yes. I skipped a whole bunch of steps because I forgot to turn the camera back on. Uh, I'll say this. Front end, the passenger side took me two hours. Driver side took me 30 minutes. Why? Because I figured out what I was doing. Um, unfortunately for that driver's side, I never turned on the camera again. But we're going to get started on the rear. So pretty simple. I already got the truck supported on jack stands on the frame, taking the wheels off, and then I've dropped the uh, rear axle down uh, and placed a jack underneath of that. First thing to come up is these shocks. So there's an upper mount and a lower mount. It's pretty straightforward. Remove the shock. Uh, and then loosen all four U-bolts uh, nuts, drop out, uh, lower the axle a little bit, and then uh, just place the spacer um, between the axle and the leaf spring pack, install the new U-bolts, torque them down, put the shock back in. As I said before, the kit comes with this shock extension that just slides up into the factory uh, shock saddle. Run a bolt through it and then the shock just turns 90 degrees and mounts crossways so you give it extra an inch of drop on that shock mount. Uh, we'll see if we actually need them or not, but uh, I plan on using them. I mean the kit was designed for it, but we'll see. I'll check back in once I get some things apart. Alright, a couple of quick tidbits. Uh, on both sides, you've actually got to remove this trim piece just above the frame rail, just on the hell with some uh, one, two, three, four clips uh, to get to the upper shock mount bolt. And then over here, this uh, wheel well liner, it's just one clip, a screw. There's a clip right here, and there's a screw right here. Pop that off, and that'll let you get to the uh, shock mount on the passenger side. Otherwise, we're done. We've got our new lip lock in place. That was pretty straightforward. And then you really can't see it, but I'll try climbing underneath. And it's kind of hard to see, but you've got your shock extension. Everything else is pretty straightforward. All we had to do, put the wheels back on and see how she sits. I have been having some major difficulties with this camera, so Lord knows what this is going to look like by the time this is done. I got another one on order. Unfortunately, it won't be here till tomorrow. And, well, that's how it goes. Always when you don't need it. I only had today to do this, so we'd have to overcome. Well, there it is. Leveling kit is installed. Two inches in the front, one inch in the rear. And I'd say all in all, it looks pretty good. Still got to get it aligned. It drives okay. I can tell the front end's out of alignment, but uh, it'll be a couple days before I can get to that. I had to switch cameras yet again, so I apologize for the graininess of the video. Also, we're starting to lose the light, so it's not exactly the best time to film, but this took me a little longer than I thought it was going to. So, you can see that for the most part, the truck actually almost sits level, slightly higher in the rear, but. Uh, a huge improvement over the stock stance. Huge improvement over the stock stance. Very happy with the way that it turned out. Like I said, once I get it aligned, we'll see how she rides. And then the next thing is going to be some tires. That's going to do it for tonight. If I have anything to add, it's going to be down the line. As always, good luck. Godspeed. So here I am a week later editing this video, and I realized that I never actually referenced the torque values that I was talking about. So, as promised, here we go. So for the front end, your cam bolts are going to be torqued to 103 foot-pounds. The controller under the steering knuckle bolt, 58 foot-pounds. 
uh, top hat to the cooler bucket. 22, those are the three bolts on top of the top hat. Uh, your strut stem bolt, one on the top, 40 foot pounds. Lower strut bolt, 99 foot pounds. Sway arm to the connecting rod, 62 foot pounds. And then your sway bar mounts, the ones that we had to drop out in order to actually get those lower cam bolts out, 94 foot pounds. It's actually quite a bit. For the rear suspension, the only ones you end up taking out are the shock mount bolts and your U-bolts. So your shock mount bolts torque down to 111 foot-pounds, U-bolts 89 foot-pounds. And that's pretty much it. I think I covered everything, but I can't be sure. That'll get you in the ballpark anyway. And then your wheel lug nut torque is anywhere between 94 and 98 foot-pounds, depending on where you look. Uh, 80 is pretty much the standard on most vehicles. Uh, 94 to 98 seems to make sense. Six lug bolt pattern on a light duty truck. But, anyway, again, thank you for watching. More videos to come whenever I have something to do around the house that needs to get done. You get to share in my pain. But in the meantime, stay classy, and I will see you later.